Good morning or good evening, depending on where you are joining us from. Uh, my name is Habiba from The Trekking Pals, and I'm joined today by Candy and John T. King. Uh, I'm so excited today because they will be sharing with us a lot of great travel stories. We will get to know them today, and we'll also <laughs> talk about travel in East Africa and Tanzania in particular. Yes. All right. Do you want to go ahead, introduce yourself, and tell us a little bit about what you do? Um, my name is Candy King, and I'm actually a website developer, which is so crazy. I got into website development because I wanted the perfect website, and there was no template for me. So I was like, well, then I'm just going to have to learn to code. So I learned how to code, and now we help a lot of other creators, just like you, um, start online portfolios or put, put their online portfolio together, work with brands. That's what we really specialize in, creating a websites for creators. John T, what do you, how about My you? My <laughs> name is Jonathan Charles Ponell King, John T King, and I am the person behind the camera. Yeah. And I do <laughs> photography, videography, and- You're also in the camera. Yeah, sometimes in the camera. And I like taking pictures. <laughs> you nailed it. I have to say, I love, love the accent. And whenever you guys are talking in your videos, I'm just sitting there, just listening to you speak. All the time. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> so oh. tell me, what's your story with travel? Where did you grow up? How did you start traveling? I know you're traveling full time right now. You just moved to Thailand, which is amazing. What's your story with travel? Where did it start? You can go ahead. She's gonna, I'm gonna interrupt she's you. gonna interrupt me like one minute in and then start yeah. story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Sorry. seven years ago, mm -hmm. seven years ago, mm -hmm. we went decided to go to China because we wanted to leave our hometown. We are, we brought up in Durban, South Africa, and we decided we wanted to go somewhere else. Yeah, and that somewhere else led us there to China. And it was a wonderful journey. We were actually teaching um, because we had no money. And we were like, well, we want to travel, but we have no money. So what can we do? And it was to teach abroad so that we would have a salary, get a long-term visa in an exotic country. And yeah, so it was we went amazing. To... Teaching was such a good thing to do because we got holidays. And so while we taught full-time, made a salary, we practiced a lot of our skills that we needed to um, manage and, you know, uh, the skills that we needed to um, yeah. pursue the career that we're in now. Does that make sense? So on full-time work, but part-time practicing what we're doing now. Yeah. So. Yeah, and we moved to Northeast China. And then after that, we went back to South Africa. And then we moved. And then we realized that we didn't want to be there. So and then, then we, we went to moved. Laos and we yeah, stayed in Laos. It's just always just kept Yeah, going. we've always had a base. And then so when we were in China, we traveled around Israel, New Zealand, Australia, all, all sorts of places. And then we went to Laos and traveled from Laos. And so we've always had a base somewhere and then moved around from there. And right now you are in Thailand. That's going to be home for... The next yes yeah, so so we we've, we've moved to Phuket yeah we have Phuket will be our base for a while mm -hmm. John she was talking about um, sending our kids to some schools and I was like whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> exciting um, yeah do you guys feel like you prefer um, you know Asia or that part of the world or you do you feel like you lean towards the culture there I saw that you guys speak a lot of languages, your experience living in Laos just feels like you guys, you know, you, you fit in, in, in that part of the world great, you enjoy it. Um, I think that the, the, there's so many things that make a place livable and there's a lot of that for us in Asia, you know, uh, every country has its pull and for us, I guess a lot of people want to go to Africa, but because we're from there, we're like, oh, it's just like normal for us. It's not really exotic or adventurous anymore because we're so used to the way of life. We're so used to the culture there. So when we came here, it was like everything was exciting and new. And so for us to live here is way more exciting than to be in Africa. Even though for a very, very long time, 
I had like, we both had like one foot in Asia and one foot in Africa. And we're like, we don't know, we don't know. Yeah. But now we know. <laughs> awesome. And how many languages do you guys speak? We speak nothing uh, fluently. Well, we speak nothing, not even English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, uh, um, so we can speak English, Chinese, Lao. We're learning Lao and Thai. Lao, Lao Thai. Uh, we practice Bur Burmese, Kiswahili. Um, but yeah, like, like we said, nothing fluently. Like we can say a few words and then the moment we start practicing another language, we forget. And then we oh, use the other oh, one. Yeah, but we can also speak some we languages, South Africa, some Afrikaans. Zulu. Some Zulu, yeah. yeah, we can a very broad variety of languages that we practice. But I love languages. They, it's just so exciting because when you learn another language, you, you're, it's like a door opening to another world. And I really mean it. Like you miss so much. Uh, like when you don't learn a language, you just miss a whole bunch of stuff when you travel to a place because language shapes your perspective of the world. Uh, uh, I just, yeah, it's so exciting. Good description. It does, isn't it? Did, did I nail it? Not really. No, I like the uh at the uh. end. <laughs> it's always nice when you're traveling to a new country. I, I, I think I appreciate when I see people putting time and effort into learning the new language. It, it just helps you connect better with the locals too. They, yes. they really get excited. Even if you know three to four words, they, oh, wow, you speak our language. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. trying. <laughs> People really, really, especially in Asia and even like in East Africa, really, really in East Africa and Asia, people appreciate it so much when you... Um, I think so many times language. people visit countries and just expect everyone to speak their language. Yeah. So many people are like, why don't you speak English? And I'm like, why don't you speak anything else other than English? <laughs> I see that we have a lot of people joining us today. Thank you guys for joining. We have some nice comments, love their energy and passion. I also love your passion and energy. And I'm so <laughs> guys. Can you read the, you must read the Burmese sentence yeah. below that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we're not that good at Burmese. We can't read can't. those characters. Yeah, if you speak Burmese, you'll have to read in the, in Pinyin. Yeah, like the, um, yeah. The, like, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Awesome. So let's talk about uh, East Africa. I know you you grew up and you spent a good amount of time in South Africa. I, I've never been to South Africa. I, I don't know how different it is. I'm sure that it's pretty different. But what was your experience traveling to Tanzania for the first time? I know that you spent a good amount of time there working, collaborating with, with hotels, which we will get to in a little bit here. But what was your first time in Tanzania like? And if you have any tips that you'd like to share with people who are watching us who plan to go. You were in Tanzania too. How, good question. How long were you there for? We spent about one month in Tanzania. Wow, nice. that's awesome. And did you go across to Kenya or you just were in Tanzania? We, most of the time in Tanzania, Tanzania when we were um, during the safari, we kind of stood at the border yeah. between Tanzania, but it was just, you know, for photos. We didn't really explore in Kenya. I, yeah. You guys had your retreat around the same time, and I was so yes. bummed. I wish we had the yeah. time to join you. We, yeah. like, literally just missed, yeah. each, just other. missed each other. So um, we, we were in, we, were, we went to uh, Zanzibar, and we were in Zanzibar for around two months. Yeah. Really? And, was it that long? Yes. Oh. And then we, were, oh, then we went to Pemba Island, which is a li like a lesser known island in the Zanzibar archipelago. But it's the How long same. How long were we there for? Pimba, like three days, four days. A week. Okay. So I we, we were there for so we, long. We, were, we felt, went to, It didn't feel like that. It felt like one day. We went to Pemba Island, which is a lesser no, uh, known island, but it's the same size as Zanzibar. But it's way a, more underdeveloped. Yes, but it's it's very exciting because like there's like dirt. The main road is like a dirt beach sand, road. Not even dirt. It's like beach in, sand road. In the jungle, it's very surreal and. At night, there's little bush babies, which are like a squirrel and a monkey had a baby. <laughs> yeah. And there are little bush babies that Perfect just sit, sit on, your, on your porch in the middle of the night, which is really cool. Because back home in South Africa, we're only used to monkeys, but bush babies are like, <laughs> are very like scarce. Thank you. So yeah, so it was crazy to see that. And we're in Pemba. And then from Pemba, we went to Dar es Salaam. From Dar, Dar es Salaam was kind of scary. We spent three days there. And then, <laughs> shame. So then while we were in Dar es Salaam, 
we were having breakfast and then the receptionist approached us and she said, hey, could you make a video for us? And she didn't know that we were very familiar with um, Hotel Collab. So we were like, the first thing we thought is, oh, maybe she's seen us from TikTok or maybe she's seen our Instagram. That was the first thing that came to my mind. And I was like, yes, you know, sure, no problem. Um, and then it got like a little bit sticky because we they didn't really know how to collaborate and we were like well we're not going to do it for you know this is our last day here and we're going to relax so if you need a video we're going to have to stay another night to create it oh and it got so messy and then eventually they understood like how much content is worth anyway so we ended up staying in Darcelon for longer than we expected to didn't love Darcelon because it was a bit spooky like scary and then you after can tell, Dar Salaam, you can tell the story of what happened, why it was a bit strange. Okay, because we got, we got out of a van in Not a van. Uh, Tuk Tuk mm -hmm. in Dar Salaam. And as we got out, I had my phone out looking at maps because we were going to it's a like restaurant. like five seconds. We got and, out of and one of the guys was like, hey, Mzungu, put your phone away. And <laughs> I was like, and I was like, what? And then he said, put your phone away. It's going to get stolen now. So I was like, ah, oh. so I was a little bit sketched. That was like our first away, like experience of uh, Dar es Salaam. So yeah, so it was a little bit scary, but- um, Nothing they... bad happened to us. It was just kind of scary. Someone saying like, hey, you better put your stuff away. It's going to get stolen. We're like, we're in the, we're in the, we're standing in the, the lights and the, like we're in public. How... Then after Dar es Salaam, we went up to Arusha. And we stayed in Arusha for a while. I don't know. And maybe. we made friends with this really nice hostel, actually, like yeah. called um, the White House. White House, so Tanzania, nice. yeah. And yeah. yeah, and we stayed around Arusha area. And then after Arusha, we took a bus up to the Kenyan border and we crossed the land border because we wanted to get my, go my drone across into Kenya. And if we flew, it would have got confiscated in Kenya. So we decided to take the land border crossing, which was a great experience. And your safaris, the safaris that you went on, that was not in Tanzania, it was Kenya. No, so we yeah. Did, we did two, right? We did one in Tanzania. Oh, we did, we did one in Tanzania? No, 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 we didn't. Oh, okay, sorry. No, we went on, um, so just on the other side of the border of Tanzania is, um, What's it called? The um, Serengeti and then no, you get no, no. the Masamara. Serengeti is on the Tanzania side. Masamara and then... No, and um, what did, one did we go to the first one, which has a view of Kilimanjaro? Uh, it, it, oh, 10 okay. seconds. Yeah, but that one was like my absolute favorite. And I must say that East African safaris are so much better than the ones in South Africa. I think I lost you there. Did you say the safaris in East Africa a lot better than South Africa? Yeah, yeah it was Amboseli Park, just on the border of Tanzania and Kenya. That was the first um, first safari we had been on outside of South Africa. I'd been in Zimbabwe, but it still isn't as better as as, as, nice. as nice, as great as East African safari. Yeah, it's just that like picture perfect, the tree with. Oh, yeah. It, you know what it's like. I mean, it's... It, it was amazing. Sometimes we sit and watch, because it was our first safari ever, Alex and I. And when we look at photos, we just can't believe even right now that it was real and we were right there. It's, 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 it's incredible. Yeah. Wow. Well, awesome. Um, so any tips for someone who's going to East Africa for the first time? Like, what are some of the tips? I, I know you guys are very well-traveled. You've been to so many countries around the world, but let's say someone who's kind of new to, to the travel world going to Africa for the first time, what are some of the things that you should pay attention to? I would definitely say whatever you think you need, to like, like your budget, double it. <laughs> because you think Africa is cheap, but it's really not as affordable as it should be. Um, don't be afraid to say no, because you do get a lot of people haggling and hustling and bullying you into buying. And don't think it's wrong to be like, no, like I, I'm not gonna buy, because it's, it's just intimidation and bullying. And you don't need to be bullied on your holiday. You don't need to be bullied on a trip. You've been, you paid so much money to have this great experience. And you don't need that being ruined by someone forcing you to buy something that is way overpriced so don't be afraid to say no that's what i'd say 
And I would also say that, uh, what would I say? I'd say fly, saf uh, um, what's it, Safari Airlines, because mm. they're really cheap. <laughs> There's an airline Which called saf Safari, Safari Airlines, and they offer really cheap flights. They, at Tanzania. They sh we should definitely get commission on this. Yes, no, no, they were really <laughs> cheap. Like we got their flight, like, like all over, like we didn't get a, f a flight domestically for more than fifty dollars, like around the Which whole of really Tanzania. Yeah. In Africa. yeah, yeah, yeah. They and we could pay on PayPal, which was easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, and have you? Uh, do, you know, don't please read my post. I'm from Myanmar, and you don't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I read your post, mate. Hete. Uh, um. So I would, yeah, I'd also say definitely spend some time on the beach and, you know, uh, if you can, go to Amber City. And go to Pemba, Pemba yes. Island. Really, really, really unique African experience. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, how much time do you guys spend in Zanzibar? Like two months. Two months. Two months we spent in Zanzibar and then a week in Pemba Island. Yeah, so about a month and a half, month and one week in Zanzibar Archipelago. Yeah, and we're collaborating with quite a few, actually our whole trip, except for Pemba, we were collaborating with hotels, which was really nice and, yeah, really cool work. <laughs> so let's talk, uh, since we're talking about the uh, hotel collapse, um, you guys have been creating content for, for a very long time full-time content creators you have a lot of things going on uh, what are your tips for people who are kind of just getting started in content creation few people watching us here myself um you know just kind of some tips to to get started i know you guys have uh, some some courses that you put out there to help people do you want to talk a little bit about those yeah my like the best tip i could give is that don't think that your follower number is what gets you collabs it, it has nothing to do with your influence because that's just one aspect of, of hunt, uh, co hotel collaborations. Hotels need a whole bunch of services and um, influencer marketing is just one service that you can provide a hotel, whereas there's, main, there's thousands of services that hotels need and they don't need them the whole year, yeah. but they need them for segments of time. So if you do the proper analysis of the needs of the hotel, you can pitch to them the right thing that they need at the right time that they will say yes no matter what. I think that's what's made our pitches stand out and that's why we've been so successful in Hotel Collabs is um, realizing very early on in our career as hotel creators that influence marketing isn't necessarily key. It's a burst of um, exposure for them, but very quickly it, it ends. We also started the majority of our collaborations just before um, COVID hit. And with international travels closing up, hotels didn't need influencer marketing. So we had to get very creative in our pitches and our offers. And doing that is what made us like much stronger. We honestly, I mean, we only, the first time we got turned down for a hotel collab was one, is when we started taking advice from a creator coach. And that was the first time we got turned down, was listening to advice from other people when we knew how to do it all along. Yeah, we, yeah. And I would definitely say this, people have so much experience outside of Instagram. Bring that life into your creation and bring that life into your pitches for example um there we know this travel nurse and i said to her what, like what is your dream i want to be an influencer i want to collab with hotels and i said okay cool the the the, the hard painful truth is hotels see a number and if you're going to pitch influencer marketing and you've got 200 followers like like what kind of exposure can you get them that they can't get themselves? So I said, you, you've got to be creative. Like you're a nurse, it's a pandemic. What can you offer a hotel? You can offer them a first aid course to their staff and tell like, this is the price. This is how much you're going to pay. Um, give it to three staff and then say, if they want more, they pay. 
and it's going to take two weeks to do. Hotel collab landed right there two weeks and possibly paid. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because a lot of people, especially people who are new content creation, they just think about content creator goes alongside with the number of followers, how many people you can inf influence, but that's not the reality. Because when I was following you guys, you were talking about even, um, I think when you were still in Asia, you're talking about teaching English to, to staff in hotels. And that's how you are bringing value to the hotel. So it goes beyond yeah. just taking photos or videos. For yeah. yeah, and and we learned as well, with our experience in China, we were teaching English, but a lot of our colleagues were not native English speakers. The, you know, a lot of countries are so desperate for English that they don't care yeah, if you're native or not. They just need someone who's better than them. And it's not necessarily, so it's not necessarily like well. just, just teaching English. It's also like there's all, plenty of other languages like um, Russian, Zanzibar, yeah, Russian, really needed, Zanzibar um, Arabic. They all, lots of countries want to, their target audience is, is the, these people from these countries. And it doesn't matter know. what language you can speak, they need to communicate with their target audience because this is who they're attracting. And if they can't communicate with them, like, yeah. So, so it, I was just talking about White House of Tanzania and they just hopped on, which is really, really cool. Jumbo, uh. jumbo, <laughs> jumbo, jumbo, Pona. So, um, yeah, like we're just saying, if you want to work with hotels, offer them um, a service that one they can't afford and one they can't provide for themselves. So, especially during the pandemic, a lot of hotels. You know, they couldn't afford to pay photographers because they re retrenched half their staff. So now you get influencers trying to ask for payment for photography when they've got nothing left to give. So it's like... Yeah, and I think also the best thing to do is when you see a, a hotel, hostel, whatever you, whatever you want to um, work with, work with um, you need to see what, where they're lacking and how you can fill that lack. And I think that that's where you become so successful with hotel collaborations is filling a need rather than just saying, this is what I offer. If you don't like it, then go fly a kite. Like, like appeal to their need. And that's when you get good responses and they're happy because it's sustainable. Your impact lasts far longer than your actual stay at the hotel. I mean, since we've got a hotel and um, White House of Tanzania, right here online with us i'm pretty sure he'll agree that um if someone approaches the hotel with a service that they actually need for example maybe a social media marketing course where they teach the staff how to take photos for the their instagram so that they don't have to keep buying content or sourcing i'm sure the hotel will say that sounds like a great idea or teaching um what else can they so teaching many so, so many what we've done things. at other like we've places they can't afford to have a full-time social media manager so so obviously we'll teach how to manage your social media but also how to create content for your socials because it's a, a certain, course in that yeah, so instead it's of a, offering it for like yeah here's three photos ten photos yeah instead of giving like ten photos we've, we've taught people how to create their own content so it's not just something that they get for 10 photos and then like, what do I do after these 10 photos? We've taught hotels how to in-house take their own content for their restaurants, their room photography, for bookings, for Goda, for social media, all sorts of things. But they can do it in-house, which is so much better for, especially during this time, for, for hotels to try be trying to do stuff in-house. Yeah. Well, this is, this is interesting because... Um... I bet you they probably, the majority of hotels, they get the same spiel from a lot of content creators, pay us to make mm -hmm. content for you, but you're coming with something different. And probably that, that's what, help you, what helps you to, to be outstanding in whatever offer you're coming up with. I'm going to instead show you how to take photos or I'm going to train your staff. This is, this is incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, when you get to the hotel, you just become really good friends with the staff. You become good friends with the general manager. And 
every time we go to a place, they they start talking about influences as if we're not. And I'm like, how? What, wait, you, you don't know that? Like, this is what we're kind of doing here. And they always tell us the same thing that they get emailed two, three, four, five, ten times, a hundred times a day with people wanting free stays. And that's the problem. It's trying to get a free stay instead of trying to give free value to somebody. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Trying to get rather than give. Is like, such a yeah, I think the best thing is to make yourself so valuable that places want you to just be there to provide your value. And obviously that includes uh, remuneration or nice accommodation. Mm -hmm. sure. So so right now um, you are in Thailand. How much of your time do you spend collaborating with hotels and creating content for hotels or what, adding value to, to the hotels you're working with? Is that something so this that- year, We decided not to pitch. We were like, we are not pitching to any hotels. We just want to be on holiday and on holiday properly. And then we kind of got itchy feet and we're like, mm -hmm. let's just pitch to... Um, yeah, we decided to do like some really, really big brands and we just pitched to, actually pitched to Ritz-Carlton and Ritz-Carlton just got back to us and said, yeah, we would like you guys to come Which over. Which is probably our big, one of, what would be our yeah, biggest Yeah, so that'll be a good one, yeah. So, but, but this month we've just been basically like, let's just go around and Thailand. The, and the cool thing is, is, so the whole, what we were just talking about, what, you know, building your portfolio, getting that confidence uh, to pitch to bigger brands, we would never ever be have had the courage to approach Ritz Colton, a thousand dollar, like that's wild, with influencer marketing because influencer marketing is much easier than you know giving a course or something. We wouldn't have had that um, courage to do that if it wasn't for those minor things like having more experience with hotels, knowing how to talk to hotels, building relationships with yeah. general managers. Um, giving way more than receiving you know just yeah that's a great accomplishment with the with the collab with the ritz congrats yeah so cool um we're still talking about when so yeah yeah, yeah we're just doing minor details now but yeah it's pretty cemented yeah that's pretty exciting but, but, but yeah it's until january when we go back to phuket we've just kept our, our holiday holiday yeah <laughs> Awesome. Uh, there's a comment on the point that you guys talked about earlier. It's kind of like the quote, if you give a man a fish, you, you feed him for a day. Or if you teach a man to fish, you feed him for, for a lifetime. About what we said uh, on hotels. Uh, we have a lot of your friends, guys, joining us here. People from Kenya saying that they miss you. Oh, That's really sweet. I know. Mm -hmm. oh, we, we, we have a, quite a few followers from East Africa on TikTok and they're asking when we're coming back, and I'm like, it's we can't. We literally. Yeah, we it's very Thailand hard. Now, if we leave Thailand no now, way. we can't. Um, we can't come back. We actually, um, we, uh, we had another social media retreat for February, and we had to postpone it because of like Omicron, this new variant, and oh my god, so hectic. There's we can't leave Thailand. Yes, we are actually in the last one of the last flights out of South Africa before it got locked up again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was lucky. So what has it been like for you guys traveling still during the pandemic? I know that you were kind of stuck in Laos for a long time and you had to work around it and make changes to, to your lifestyle. How, how is it going for you guys? A lot, of, a lot of COVID tests. Yeah, my nose is like, no more. No more. <laughs> I hope we're going to be based now for a while because we're going to be we'll be based here. Um, yeah, sometimes it's it's uh, to leave loud was very very expensive. Um, so that was the uh, the most and so stressful because you know when you have to spend that much money on a flight that doesn't cost that much. You just when you're spending so much money on things, it's really horrible. But but besides that, I think the only difference in traveling is you just need like nowadays you just need to make sure that you have everything in order. Everything. If you think you need that, just make sure you have it. You just need to have everything, all the paperwork, everything done. <laughs> There's so much paperwork traveling. Sure, but yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, so it's just more paperwork, but it is very possible to travel now, but lots and lots of paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> I had like a 
to go to Thailand on like a piece of like wads of paper like this. Yeah, but and not, there was loads of like double copies because you didn't want to lose anything. Yeah, no, well, not to make sure Candy had because if she gets in another queue and we can't be together, so she has her set of documents, I have mine. So he's got my set of documents and I've got my set of documents. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because now, like nowadays, you don't want like the worst thing that can happen is you're missing something and you can't go through. And they're very strict. So if you are missing something, they'll just send you back, and then you lose a lot of money. So yeah. Yeah, Bye. yeah I know it's, a, it's a, things can get a little bit complicated, but like you said, with good organization, just planning things ahead of time, it's still possible to travel. And we've seen it. We've seen a lot of people still traveling around the world, which yeah. is incredible. Yeah. And where, where exactly are you guys right now? Uh, we are home in Arizona. Okay. Okay. You went yeah, So we've been living in Arizona for a while and uh, we traveled part time. Do you have any plans coming up? Uh, we are talking about Russia probably Ooh. for 2022. That's but exciting. We've been yeah. wanting to go to Russia for about seven Long years. Time. Yeah. Even longer. Jaunty, Ever since they, they, they became visa-free for South Africans, we get a six-month free Before visa. Before then you wanted to go, and then they became visa-free, and you were like, ah. Yeah, but it just hasn't fit, fit properly, so yeah, so maybe soon. I wanted to do, when we were in China, I wanted to do the Trans-Siberian Railway, where you leave from Beijing, and you go through Mongolia, Ulaanbaatar, and then go up through Siberia, and end in St. Petersburg. Karen is not your father. Hello. <laughs> Can't you say hello? Hello. Can you? Can you say? <laughs> oh, can't. I can't say hello as well. But awesome. So um, all the tips that you guys shared with us today about content creations, you have uh, this available for people to, to go to your profiles and purchase the, the hotel collabs. Do you want to talk we a little bit about the brands? We have a really cool special on just for Christmas ending on the 26th of December, but it's 50% of all of our products. So Yeah, and the, the thing with it is it's like it did take us a long time to perfect all our pitches, the way we pitch and stuff like that. A lot of trial and error and all of that is basically we just put it into a box. We, learned, we honestly learned the error from other creators giving us bad advice. Yeah. So all that information just here, yeah, you don't have to go through all that all those issues that we did and she has the final product for you to do the what we do now so it's, it's basically like a jump start so don't do what we did at the start jump to where we are now yeah and um, and then th so there's two books i would definitely recommend reading the personal branding one first because hotels always want to work with like corporates that's why we also created King Code. So not just to help creators build a portfolio, but because corporates want to work with corporates. So when we present ourselves as a corporate, it's like a no-brainer for a lot of them. Yeah, so, I think also the thing is that... Um, so we so in the book, so we talk about personal branding and how to build a brand. I would read that first because you kind of need a brand before you can work with hotels. And that's where a lot of creators get it wrong. They just start pitching. They want to work with brands. They want brand collabs, but they don't even have a brand themselves. How are you going to get a brand collab if you don't have a brand? If you are not, you, you know? Yeah, it's very, so, very, very important because like, because the, the hotel that you pitch to is going to have a brand manager. They're going to have a marketing director and they can smell straight away if someone pitches to them that is very, very wavy and flaky. You've got to be a strong brand to to be able to communicate with another strong brand. And like all your letterheads, all your agreements, all your um, negotiations, your email signature, all needs some sort of branding on it. So if you don't have the branding, then your pitches are going to be a bit flaky. So I would suggest getting the branding book, reading that, and then reading the hotel collabs, even though everyone just wants to jump to the hotel collabs book. But... Yeah, because that's the, that's the fun part, right? But <laughs> and that's it took us. It took us a lot of other stuff to step up to where we are with Hotel Collapse. Hello, Cuban. Hey, Cuban. I know Cuban. Cuban, went, we went to church with Cuban. Yeah. 
Awesome. And it probably, it took you many years to get to this point where you have the confidence, you have a strong pitch, you know how to approach all of these hotels. So I feel like as a new content creator, you could do it yourself and learn as you go, but it's going to probably take a long time, but rather you can learn from someone who's done it many times, many years, and then just save time. And your confidence is going to be squashed by the end you know as a new creator and you keep getting turned down you have like yeah it's very hard like when you start and you get turned down and you don't know why and you don't know don't know what you did wrong because it could be one thing it could be a thousand things but yeah yeah i have a question for you so how many hotels did you have to pitch to until you got your first hotel collab if you one. guys remember <laughs> one our first one yeah, we got our first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and our second one, and our third one, and our fourth. And we had all of them. We before. hadn't got. Yeah, we didn't get turned down. Mm -hmm. And we never had to, because of our services and what we we're at contributing. We never actually had to pay to stay, um, until we, like I said, we worked with someone and we actually paid to stay at this hotel. And that was like I've never paid to work. For any, that's just so yeah the thing is i think because we were so nervous when we started that we were like we're going to do this so right so we did so much research so much and, found out so much also, information and i mean it, it was great that we we never we had never been turned down by hotels but there were other things that we didn't have in place to protect us so we didn't have a, an agreement in place we didn't have contracts in place and this one hotel collab went so south, it went so bad that I said, John T, I never, ever want to work with a hotel again. And I can't remember the details, but we got there and they just wanted so much stuff from us. The yoga instructor, instructor was a complete nutcase, for lack of a better word. And she started asking us to please, um, the hotel met owner had four other brands and she wanted us to go and do content at all four of these no three we got to choose three but the yoga instructor was like oh no you will do a yoga class and you will post it and you will make video content and you will pay to do my class as well and i was like girl firstly like i'm not going to be doing your class because we're going to be like filming and like running around so i don't understand why i must pay to photograph you it went so south and um, we were going to stay there for 14 days giving them a social media course and yeah. that we're like i can't for my mental health i can't be here for 14 days we squished that course those hours <laughs> into three days we're like okay all of you do the course we're going to get this done in three days you're going to finish the course you get your certificates and then we're out of here we just couldn't and that was yeah, the great. simple thing but because like, we didn't have a contract agreement in place so it's very important to have certain and agreements I, and templates in place too. yeah and like and our second hotel collab which was amazing we had like so much good food and good drinks but again we didn't have an agreement of how much content we would hand over and um the owner of the hotel he was amazing and we were able to get so much Content, content for our portfolio. For portfolio so we don't regret it at all because we got a lot we were very versatile and uh, we got photos of food and rooms and um massage like spa stuff Every, everything, everything you can so imagine so cool. what um, content we but got then, for like, them he would message us and be like oh it's my daughter's birthday can you come over and like photograph her birthday and there was no boundaries mm. that were set so we literally by the end of the month we had handed over uh about six thousand to ten thousand dollars worth of content and i was like this was hectic <laughs> a lot of running around yeah so that's sure. the question that i was going to ask you when you are traveling and you know you're pretty much working for these hotels how do you strike a balance between the work that you have to do or deliver and at the same time enjoying yourself and enjoying your time at destination um, definitely putting the agreement and putting a contract agreement in place so you know as a creator how long it takes you to do something and making sure okay I'm staying here three days so I can 
I can do three days. I'll do about like I want like three hours of work, four hours of work, and the rest of the time I have to enjoy myself. Right? Yeah, and um, and then also just having like strong and good work ethic. So when you get there, you get that content. If it's photography, you get it done. You are like okay? Yeah, because if you wait, manager and you say this is what I, this is what we're going to do. We had to shoot four rooms. Please, can you make sure that the rooms are set as if at there was a time. guest coming? They, I've looked at the lighting. The light comes in at this time. This is this is what we want. And tomorrow at nine a.m., all four rooms need to be ready. Two hours, you can have. Yeah, done. this is the time yeah. I want the breakfast. So you set times, set that like you because you're a professional. So you you want your professional photographer, videographer coming in, and and this is the time you're working. This is the time you want them there, and, and the, they uh, respect you know, that. As like a general manager. They, they have a general understanding of what needs to go on, but they're not professional photographers. So they don't know how to set a room and they're not supposed to know that. That's your job to go in and say like this, 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 let's get it done. Um, and, and they really appreciate it when you can, when you do that, because they feel like they feel confident in your ability to uh, hand over professional content. That's awesome. So you, you much plan everything ahead of time, you know, your timeline, you know how much time you spend in, taking photos or videos or whatever. And I mean, if it's some days, you, you know, it's going to rain and you've just got to make hay while the sun shines, do, with what you, do what you can with the time that you have as well. Mm. I think I saw a few comments of folks asking where in Thailand you guys are right now. We are in Koh Tao Island, which is Turtle Island. Koh Tao. Koh Tao. Tao, which Tao means turtle. So, and Koh is island. So we're in Turtle Island. Koh Tao. So what's the, how do you say, how do you say, uh, hello? How do you greet in, in, in Thai? So, um, different genders will greet differently. So for a woman, I'll say Sawadika. And I'll say Sawadika. Yeah. Sawadika. Yeah, yeah, no, so you no, say Sawadika. You say Sawadika. Sawadika. And I always, yeah. I see you taking photos, when I was watching your TikToks, you, you do this sign. What does this mean? This is a heart. A little, little heart. It's the bottom of the heart. No, I'd say it's the full heart. No, it's the bottom of the heart. No, look at that. <laughs> That's like the top of the heart. Okay, so when Candy does it, it's a full heart. When I do it, it's the bottom of the heart. It's a heart. Aww. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't you see a heart, Shanti? I do. Yeah, I do. Like a whole heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I missed that. <laughs> I thought it was the bottom. You taught me this. And I just... Yeah. <laughs> Sawadika. 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 Kon Sabadi Mai. How are you? Please reply. Hello, Shin. Shin, where are you from? <laughs> Cute. Yeah. Um, what else could we teach you some Thai stuff? I can teach you a song. <laughs> I can sing a lot of Thai songs. Candy can sing a lot of Thai songs. She can sing Myanmar songs, Thai songs, Vietnamese songs, Cambodian songs, <laughs> Kenyan I, songs. Don't ask me to translate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for it. I love, I love TikTok videos. You, you guys are very, I mean, you're popular on TikTok, obviously, but in, in Laos, super popular in Laos. Yep. Crazy, that was crazy. yeah. In Laos, it was sick. In Laos, we'd go out to go like have like dinner, and people would be taking photos of us, and they would get home, and then there'd be videos on social media <laughs> of people like, for, like, filming like, us across the street and eating and stuff. So it was a bit intense, but yeah. So what honestly, uh, some days I would be like, I don't want to go out today because I don't want. Felt like Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy how how did it all happen just tiktok i think yeah it came like uh i think what what you said is that people appreciate language and one of our main things we we travel we love travel and that's what we show in all of our accounts and tiktok was just a different medium for showing travel and, and showing a different part of and just showing like on instagram obviously you show the beautiful like like what's happening, the beautiful hotel, the beautiful the sunset. The reason we go to those places. The, like the, the reason we view. go to the places. But 
in TikTok, we show what we do at those places. We learn language, we eat good food, we do learn culture, and that's what we show on TikTok. So it's, it's, we love TikTok because it shows the, TikTok and Instagram together show the complete of how we travel. And then the cool thing is, is that we've learned so much more about the culture and language because of TikTok. I mean, we're learning trends and stuff that we would never, ever have been exposed Yeah, like we'll sit at markets and they'll be playing music and we'll be sitting with we'll local like, people. Oh, I know this and we know, we know every song that they're playing and all the local trends, the reason why people are wearing... Like, yeah, like, foreigners. like foreigners. Because so we know the reason why people are wearing clothes, the reason why they're doing certain things is because it's a culture and we learn that from TikTok, which is awesome. That's we, we really appreciate the app. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, I love the the TikTok video where uh, can you change in outfits? Oh yeah, that's uh, what oh. you're just showcasing. You know how you dress in Thailand and Laos, Canada. And that's another thing that I just love about a lot of the Asian cultures is that they they don't feel like what are you the cultural appropriation? Yeah, yeah like, just when... like please wear our clothes. I want to see what it looks like on you, and then you wear it because. Yeah, oh, and then, and the then yeah, back, and... back home and like Western culture, you, you you embrace other cultures, and sometimes it can be negative, seen as negative. But when you when in Asia, they just they just love you, just like showing some sort of appreciation of their of their culture, showing it to the rest of the world. Um, they they really when, like when it. When we started diving into Khmer, so Cambodia, um, some actually one of our videos went viral in the states and people were like this is so offensive a white girl speaking Khmer, a, a white girl not speaking english i was like whoa hold on so it's offensive because you're not familiar with people what yeah it was very yeah was so horrible. i think it's, it's nice because it shows a lot like that your cult like we love it because it shows that that your culture means something and we can we can basically just, we feel like we're honoring your culture, like in yeah, your language and your traditions when we're showing it off to the rest of the world, yeah. Of course. It's very, it feels great when you see someone who doesn't speak your language and they're putting time to learn. It's funny yeah. for me, even with, the, with Alex in our relationship, every time he comes up with a new word in Arabic or Moroccan, that is oh. so excited. Like, oh my God, I feel like, you know, you build that connection with me. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, that's so special. <laughs> I wish you needed to learn my language. I do. Uh, English. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I, I honestly uh, can imagine that. Because I, I feel such appreciation. Can... Oh, sorry. No, no, no. You, you, you go ahead. I was, I was saying someone is asking you to sing a Burmese song. Oh, what's my favorite one? Hey, chate lemingaru tangiro. Duri amadu sai is up to buy. What do my love it? Come make up. Come make up. That's a baby song. And John, do you have a good singing voice? <laughs> no, my singing voice is terrible, which I think sometimes helps us because. <laughs> Because I think it's funny when I sing and try to sing in a, I don't have any, any singing ability at all. You go viral in my house when you sing. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Pilo. Pilo, my sis. Yeah. Aww. I love you. Aww. Kelly Henry is your girl. Hey, Kelly Henry. So sweet. Aww. Yeah. A lot of hey, so I know some um, Arabic words, obviously. I know, Habibi. 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 That's a good one. Habibi and Yala. 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 I in Egypt, whenever we would, like, all of a sudden, we just get in a Yala. taxi, we'd be like, we're going there. And then as we start going, Yala. And I'd be like, cool. So I can <laughs> shout Yala with them. And you're like, let's go. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's good. They liked it. I liked it. It was fun. Have you guys traveled in the Middle East or some uh, areas? We've been speaking? to Israel, Palestine, and, and Egypt. And, and Egypt. Yes. But, oh, I'd love to go to more. I've been dreaming of going to the Middle East because I just love the desert. I think it's such a fantastic place. But yeah, 
Yeah. And I like, I like how, because we always go through um, United Arab Emirates yeah, and, and Doha. Doha. And I love how they say the numbers. And it always sounds so cool when they say the numbers in the airport. Oh. But like, yeah, so I've always wanted to. How do I count in Arabic? Like one, two, three. Wahid. Wahid, Wahid. yes. Itnan. Itnan. Talata. 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 Wahid, it, itan, talata. Yeah. Itnan, talata. In, um, in Malay, it's Taleta as well, I think. Probably. Yeah, well, they, they, they have lots of Arabic in there. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're, so, le we're, we're, le we're learning Malay the other day, so that's just an, yeah. Fun <laughs> Yeah. Someone was yeah. asking earlier if you guys have plans to go to Morocco anytime soon. We want to go to Morocco. How cool Mor is it? See, I think like Morocco is also like more Middle Eastern, I mean, yeah, than Africa. That's what it seems. I think from uh, from the architecture and especially the proximity to the Sahara Desert, you get that mm -hmm. unique experience, especially if you go and you spend the night in the Sahara Desert. It feels more Middle Eastern, even though yeah. it's Africa. Like we got those vibes from Egypt. Like we had never, so we went from Israel into Egypt. And I was like, this is, this is total different to Southern Africa. This is nowhere of Africa I'm familiar with. This is much like like across the border, across like by Israel, Palestine, like that's what that's what, so I was like Egypt has a lot more influence from that side than it does African side. So mm. I can imagine just across the board there. I don't know about Libya, but what I see of Morocco, I can see it's very your like Turkish, Middle Eastern kind of that like mixture of that. So I'd really like to see what kind of African influence they have. Yeah. Hey Amanda. Yeah. Hey girl. <laughs> well, awesome guys. We have been going for fifty-one minutes, which is incredible. We we talk a lot. I, know. <laughs> I love. Oh, I love like, like interrupt. Oh gosh. <laughs> I was I was a little bit nervous earlier today. I was like, oh my god, I'm just like I have to learn to contain my excitement a little bit because it's <laughs> it's really exciting for me to to see you and interact with you. I know. But... I think that's our first time doing a live together, isn't it? We haven't mm -hmm. done, we have a video we haven't video called before, have we? I don't think we have. This is the no. first time. Yeah, but we've no. been following each other for a while. Yeah. yeah, I really I really hope that we can join you in the future to one of your. Uh, retreats. Um, yes, following... and we're hoping to have villas in Phuket mm -hmm. that we're excited to invite people to come join us. Can you say that name for me? Cool Quest. Cool Quest. Cool Quest. I'm dyslexic, so my reading ability is really bad. But thank you so much, personally. Just want to say, yeah, Cool Quest. You've been like hanging on, very involved time. in the conversation. So, yeah, Cool Quest are our new uh, friends from from YouTube. They are a couple from Canada and the US, and they make cool videos about the outdoors, hiking and backpacking. We have an interview with them later today. <laughs> oh, oh no! Two we... interviews. Yeah, but they are interviewing us. <laughs> oh, okay, oh wow! Okay, okay. We actually, we actually, just uh, can I can I just... yeah? We actually planning. Normally, we do our YouTube. We've did a little bit of YouTube, like six months ago and we did it's been a year okay it's been a, a whole year. year and we did very like like uh very like cinematic drone cinematic videos but now we're trying to do we're probably going to try go more onto a vlog side so that's gonna we probably... did like vlog with cinematic but yeah. honestly cinematic is so hectic because for every one second i'm not kidding it can take like an hour of like yeah. idiot uh, uh, editing i can't say that word today editing so yeah so we're trying to, we go, this is going to be very vlog style. So we're going to see how it works out. It could re, really, I don't shank. know. Yeah. No, it's not going to shank. Yeah, no. we'll see how it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I watched the, I, I think I watched the video you're talking about. You guys are in the canoe and then you have drone footage. It, it's, it looks really nice. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff like that. But now we're going to do some vlog stuff. So we'll okay. see how that ends up. If people even like hearing us speak. <laughs> now we like you guys it. you guys have great personalities and Aww. you just work very well together it's it, it's always fun to watch you i'm sure you'll do great Aww. that's so sweet Thank i you. really appreciate that sometimes i feel like we can be annoying. sometimes I feel like we're talking to ourselves <laughs> <laughs> i 
I think everyone, right, who does stories feels like at some point you're just talking to yourself. Yeah. Well, awesome, guys. Um, I really hope that we can, you know, meet in the future. Maybe we'll join one yes. of you. Or if you come to the United States. I don't know if you've been to the United States before. I've been to North Carolina. Um, Candy hasn't, but we've been to Canada together. I've been to Canada. Love Canada. Love Toronto. Love Canadians. Uh, the the nicest down to earth people ever. Um, so open minded. So yeah, get along well with Canadians. Must say it. Did you hear that? To our new Canadian friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, we went to Canada Wonderland or Toronto Wonderland, something like Canada that. Canada Wonderland. And John T. drank so much pop that he puked. Yeah, it did. <laughs> oh. Thanks, babe. Yeah, and he, was, he wasn't even a kid. He was like, it was like when he was 29. Yeah, 30. Was, yeah, like 32. Was like, yeah, it was like three years ago. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. And we've got our friend Fomat, North Carolina, right here. Awesome. Yeah, I was in it. Uh, best, best thing about North Carolina is um, what's that chicken place? I always talk about it. Go, Bojangles. Bojangles chicken. Best chicken place, Bojangles. What is, um, we, we just met this guy called Brian. When, and he told us that there's a, a nickname for Bojangles. What? Jangies. Jangy. Okay, I don't remember that. But um, do I remember where I went in North Carolina? We were in North, uh, New Bern, Atlantic Beach, and Raleigh. Yeah. Raleigh um, is a nice city. I used to go for work sometime. Do you people know Kiswahili? Kidogo. Kidogo. Jumbo. Kidogo is a little Jumbo bit. We just sang that song. I think you might have logged on a little bit late, but we all we, three of us we sang have, Jumbo song. Yeah, we have to to sing the song. Maybe we'll close we'll close the live stream by singing the song all together. What do you guys think? I think that is. Are we going to finish with um, Tanzania or with like? What, like, do you know, do know, do know what's a really cool, a really cool Kenyan singer that I like is uh, Major. Do I know him? Yeah, he sings Karibu Kenya, Karu, uh, Karibu Kanairo. Can you sing it? No. Okikuja Kenya, yeah. Shinwa Wamatatu. Yeah, Okikuja Kenya, Shinwa Yamatatu. A Kenyan nani. Musi Polisi Gagonia Wamatatu. Yes, I remember it. So it means when you come to Kenya, there's three people that you have to be careful of, friends with, that you have yeah. to make allies with. It's the police, the robbers, and the taxi drivers. Yeah. <laughs> Good tip. <laughs> <laughs> should we should we sing the jumbo song? Yeah, because you know that too. Oh, I, I feel, I feel so shy. I don't know it at all, oh, so I'll go okay. straight on candy. Yeah, no, and you do know it. Oh, I feel like I'm blushing. Okay, let's just go. I think I'm going like a room. One, two, three. Jumbo, Jumbo Bona, a body gun. Why are you really? Okay, go again, go again. Okay, wait, I'll put an answer. Look at the ugly that is. That one, okay, go. One, two, three, go. Jumbo, Jumbo Bona, a body gun. Zuri Sana, Wageni, Wakari Bishwa. Tanzania yetu hakuna matata. Bravo, Kenji. <laughs> Nailed it, Kenji. Well, and you changed the filters. You put this ugly one on me. <laughs> so which one do you have on that one? <laughs> That's a bit of a one. Awesome, Kenji. No, Great job. No, that one's good. <laughs> Oh, it's wonderful. Okay. You did well, yes. Kenji. You Thank nailed you. it. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah, I'm going to keep this one on. <laughs> it's a good look. Yeah, it's on me. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, no, thank you. Thank you.
thank you. Thank you so much for, for making the time to meet and chat. I really had so much fun talking to you. And thank you to all those who, who joined us today. Um, if you're not following uh, Candy and John T. King, be sure to, to check them out. They have amazing content, always, always inspiring. So I'm excited to see all of your upcoming adventures. And I can't wait to meet you in person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got to meet in person. We can play around with some filters. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.